Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 1st, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Attackers are always looking for ways to use existing system tools to fly under the radar. One tool that has gotten a lot of attention on Windows is CertUtil. CertUtil can be used to base64 encode content. This feature is actually part of CertUtil's ability to convert different certificate formats. For example, the popular binary DER format format, it can be converted to the Base64 based PEM format just by running the file through CertUtil. But when CertUtil performs this conversion, it actually doesn't check if the file that you provide is a certificate. It just takes the file, Base64 encodes it, and then adds the usual start certificate and certificate lines to the file. So Attackers have figured that out and are using CertUtil now to decode various files. Now, a normal certificate file is X509 encoded, and that means that the first byte is always 48 or 30 in hexadecimal, or if you base64 encode this, it's the uppercase letter M. So our handler Didi wrote a Yara signature as part of his day job looking for any files that claim to be a certificate based on the start certificate line, but don't start with a letter M in the base64 encoded part. He ran this against VirusTotal and well, no surprise here really, he found a large treasure trove of malware. Of course, interesting here is not just that he found malware, but also this malware often wasn't recognized by any of the antivirus engines. And of course, instead of just looking for certificates that aren't certificates, he was also able to look, for example, for certificates that include Base64 encoded executables or PowerShell scripts and such, just based on how the headers for these files is typically being encoded in Base64. Well, and then there are also some attacks that just are not going away. The latest example is the good old Tempest attack. You may remember it from the 80s if you have been around back then. Back then, the big threat was CRT monitors. CRT monitors are well known to emit a lot of electromagnetic waves based on the big tube they're using to actually create the image. So... Back then, for example, one spy technique was to detect the emissions from the CRT monitors from across the street and essentially use that to recover the image on the monitor. These attacks were pretty much going away with modern LCD monitors. And the idea here was that LCD monitors really don't emit a lot of electromagnetic waves. Also, the frequencies are a lot higher, which makes detection of the signals a lot more difficult. Well, uh, Una Reisenen, a Finnish researcher, came up with a practical setup to actually detect the content of a modern LCD monitor from a room next door. All she used was a pretty impressive Yagi antenna, but something self-built, and of course, a software-defined radio. The question that's a little bit left open in the YouTube video demo that she posted is whether it's actually the monitor doing the emitting here or whether it's the cable. Now, in one of her tweets, she points out that the cable actually comes with a note telling you that you shouldn't really use this cable if there is a lot of interference. And yes, you know, cables, in particular longer cables, are of course antennas themselves, and they typically do leak some of this signal. And anti-adware company AdGuard discovered a number of mobile applications and browser extensions that are collecting users' browsing history and send it back to the author of the software 
Big Star Labs. So all of uh, these applications were created by the same company. The exact purpose of the data collection isn't really clear, but AdGuard suggests that the data is collected and resold. Now, AdGuard believes that 11 million users are affected by this. They may be double counting here somewhat. They essentially just added up uh, the users that downloaded all the different applications and extensions. Now, I came across this story via Heise, a German IT magazine and a website, and they actually looked into this a little bit closer. Now, yes, they were able to confirm the data is being exfiltrated. It's actually exfiltrated, unencrypted, all in the clear. But then Heise did something that most of us never do. They actually read the privacy policy that comes with this software, and it states right there that your browser history will be collected. Now, whether that's uh, still the right thing to do or not is highly questionable here, in particular, since the data is being sent in the clear. Big Star Software says that they're not identifying individual users, but according to what Heise has seen, there is enough detail being exfiltrated here to easily identify where the data is coming from. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.